we are going to insert the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a line chart so we're going to go to a different tab this time we're going to go to yearly gross income and we're going to highlight the range b4 through c14 so here's b4 right b4 through c14 go to our insert tab we're going to go to our insert line chart button and we're going to go down to the second row that says line with markers so there is our chart now notice that the chart itself didn't actually create itself correctly notice that the years we chose the years and it really should be like 2015 through 2024 instead it shows 1 through 10 so we need to make some corrections we're going to click on the select data button hit the dialog box and we know that gross income well that one's correct the year is not so we are going to remove the year and in the horizontal category that is where we're going to add the range b5 through b14 so b5 through b14 we click ok and we click ok so now our chart is showing correctly now let's create some spark line spark lines so let's go to a different tab we're going to go to our overview tab and this is in the way so we go to overview and we're going to go to the range d29 through d34 so we're going to move our bars over so d29 through d34 d29 through so right here okay so we're going to highlight the range and we're going to insert something called a spark line well before i can explain what a spark line is it's probably easier if you saw it first and then and then you can see it so notice that we go to our insert tab and then we look at spark lines there are three different kinds of spark lines we have line spark line column spark line and win loss spark line so depending on what you want to show this is the kind of spark line you're going to choose in this particular instance we're going to insert a column spark line so we're going to click column and it asks us what range we want the columns to show so we're going to highlight the range c6 through l11 so c6 go up c6 through l11 ah but we're going to get this from the estimated projection that's why it didn't make sense all right so from our estimated production we're going to highlight the range C6 through L11. So this makes a little more sense. C6 through L11. Okay, so we're not including the year, we're not including the total cases. We're only looking at the data itself. Okay? So, and actually we have it wrong. I put B6, so we have to be careful here. So it's actually, let's take this out. Okay, let's do this again. C6 through L11. Click OK. And that shows us our, our spark lines. So let's, let's look at what, what is it actually saying? Well, in order to interpret this, we are looking at the Chardonnay, White Riesling, Pinot Grigio, right? And this is the estimated production. These are the numbers that we're creating basically little charts from. So as we start with 250 and increase to 3,500, through the years, all right? Some start at zero, we, we go up to 2,000, 1,500, et cetera. So you can see that there's a trend going upwards as far as the production goes. When we go to the overview, we indeed do see the production increasing just like from where we got the actual data from, from the estimated production. So these spark lines are essentially little tiny charts indicating a trend a growth or whatever now we could have used a line but i think the impact looks a little bit better with a column on this one now let's optimize 
our spark lines. Like everything else that we insert within most Office products, we get a new tab. We inserted Sparkline, so we get our Sparkline tools. We click on Design, and we're going to customize the axis to make it, again, a little bit more clear. So we're going to affect the axis. We're going to put in a custom value. And notice that it only gives us a maximum value. It does not give us a minimum because Excel assumes that the minimum is always going to be zero whenever it comes to Sparkline. So we're going to put 3,500 as our maximum because we know that that's our maximum production number right there. So we're going to click OK. So notice what happens to a Sparkline. We get a little bit more of an indication of comparison between the highest produced number, uh, the highest number, the highest produced number of cases within a wine, and the lowest produced. One thing also to look at when we look at the spark lines. We notice that they are grouped. Notice how they, they are grouped. And sure enough, as you click on another one of the spark lines, they, they all group together. You, you choose them all. So what we're going to do is we're going to ungroup one of these. All right, so we can separate it. So we're going to click on D30. Make sure you're in your Sparkline Tools design, and we're going to ungroup. All right, and we're going to click on D30. Well, that's the one we already have highlighted. And we're going to change the sparkline color on this one. So we're going to go to sparkline color. We don't have to go to another tab. Just go to sparkline color. And we're going to choose orange accent to darker 25%, which should be this one. Orange accent to darker 25%. So we apply the color to that. And now that they're ungrouped, we can apply different colors of our spark lines to the different items. So let's, well, this, this one's still grouped, so we need to ungroup this one as well. So D31, and actually I think what we're supposed to do is ungroup all of them. So let's go ahead and highlight the ones that are still grouped together, and let's just ungroup them all. There, now as we click on them, they are all ungrouped. So let's go to D31. And for those of you that didn't catch that, I clicked on this one first, held on the control key, and then I clicked on all the other spark lines that were still grouped together, and then I clicked ungroup. So we're going to go to D31, and we're going to change the color of the spark lines on this one, the column spark line. So we're going to change that to gray 50 accent, so spark line color. We're going to go to gray. I think this is gray. Yes, gray 50, though. So we're gonna go here, no that's black. What's this? This is white. This is gray text. Okay, I wonder if, this is gray 25. Okay, where's gray 50? Here we go. So gray 50 accent three. All right. And D32, we're gonna change to gold accent four. So sparkling color, gold accent four. And D33 is going to be green accent six, green accent six, lighter 60%. So there we go, percent. And then D34 is going to be B35. So sparkling color is gonna be green accent six, and there. Now, every spark line has its own color. That way it is differentiated from, from the others. So let's go on to our next step. And we're gonna create data bars now. So in order to create data bars, well, before I can explain them, just like with spark lines, we're gonna create them first, and then I'll go over how they work. Through D43. And this is a conditional format. So we go to conditional formatting and we're going to go down to data bars and the style that we're going to be using is gradient fill so blue data bar gradient fill so blue data bar gradient fill all right so that's green data bar no blue data bar okay so there we've created our our data bars so what what do they do well let's look at it a little bit closely 
based on the dollar value, the highest number is 27. So as you can see, the data bar goes all the way across to, to 27 because that, that covers the entire bar. That's, that's the most expensive one. And in relation to 27, the other bars kind of don't, you know, they're, they're adjusted to indicate how much less than, than 27 they're set to. But we maybe we don't want the, the numbers themselves to be to be hidden by the blue bar. So for example, if the highest number were 35, the bar on 27 might be able to clear that section. So let's adjust this bar. And we're gonna go to conditional formatting and we're gonna manage this rule. So we're gonna change the rule. We're gonna edit the rule. And what we're gonna do in the maximum field we're going to change that to a number instead of automatic because right now it's filling up 100%. So we're gonna put a number and we're gonna make that highest value, we're gonna pop in as 35. So if we do that, notice that the bars themselves think that the highest number is 35. So 27 being the highest number, it no longer hides the, the values. They're not covered by the bars. Now, so put in a header, we're gonna to go to our page layout tab. Okay, and within our page layout tab, we're going to go to page setup and launch our dialog box launcher. By the way, remember this, this is the way, the, the, the best way, the easiest way to put in a header and a footer in an Excel sheet. We're gonna to go to header footer, and we're gonna to go to custom header and we're gonna to go to the center and we're gonna import a picture. So we're gonna put a watermark and it's gonna say draft. So we're gonna import a picture and the picture is, it's gonna to try to go offline, on, online on the internet. So let's just go ahead and click on browse or you can just go offline if you don't get a, a network connection. You're gonna browse, hopefully you've saved all of your files that we copied over from the instructor share I need to go to the instructor share. I'm gonna to go to uh, CIT 107. Files, we're on tutorial four. We're doing the tutorial. So here's the draft picture. It's a PNG file, which is a picture file. All right, <clears throat> now that we put the picture in there from a file, we are going to edit the picture. So we're gonna to go to format picture. we get a new dialog box. And what we're gonna do with the picture, where'd it go, here it is. We're gonna make it so that it's kind of washed out. So that way it doesn't, it's, it doesn't come in too strong. So we're gonna click on the picture tab. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we're going to click on color and we're gonna say wash out, okay? Notice that the brightness and the contrast automatically adjust it for us, all right? So we're gonna click OK, and we're gonna click OK again, and let's look at how it's gonna look. So let's click on Print Preview, and there we go. So there's our header, it says Draft, and I think that looks pretty sharp. Now keep in mind, right now it's only on the active sheets, right? So if we wanna see on all of them, we pretty much click on Entire Workbook, and Currently, it's only going to be on the active sheet, that header footer. So if we need to change it, we go to uh, to put them on the different pages. And that, my dear class, is the end of our of our lecture of tutorial four. So enjoy your weekend, and I will see you all on Tuesday. Please try to do your homework, the review assignment from tutorial four over the weekend that way on tuesday we only have to worry about the lab all right have a good weekend have a good night and i'll see you soon